Hi, everyone. Welcome to the 93rd Online Spintronics Seminar. It is my pleasure to introduce today's speaker. Professor Jingwei Liu obtained his PhD in the Department of Physics, Tsinghua University in 2014, and then he started his postdoc research in MIT. He joined Hong Kong University of Science and Technology in 2017 as an assistant professor. His research interest includes uh, topological materials, including quantum anomalous hall insulators, topological insulators, topological uh, crystalline insulators, and uh, topological semimetals, and uh, quantum Monte Carlo simulations of strongly correlated systems, atomic thing, uh, layer thing, ferroelectric materials and physics, two-dimensional quantum materials and phenomena, as well as applications of machine learning in physics. So without further ado, Professor Liu, please uh, go ahead with your talk. Okay, thank you very much. So yeah, thank you very much. So first I would like to thank the organizers to, to give me this opportunity to, to share our recent work. So as introduced by Professor Fan, so basically I'm a topological material guy and 2D, 2D material guy. So therefore, we are really new to this field. So therefore I decided to speak uh, the, the, the short story based on my own understanding. So there might be many, many misunderstandings or, uh, or something wrong. So if you find someone that something is wrong, just tell me, okay? So today I'll talk about the, the giant uh, piezomagnetism and non-collinear spin current from the CPAS spin wave locking. So maybe this, this kind of word is very strange to you. So let me try to introduce them, okay? So the, the, the outline of this talk will be this four parts. First part, I will try to introduce the spin wave locking, okay, uh, in the 2D material or in other systems. And then I will try to demonstrate the existence of C plus spin wave locking. So far, maybe it's not clear to you, later I'll explain what it means. So then I'll discuss what's the normal properties of this kind of C plus spin wave locking. Basically, you can use the spin to induce a net mechanization or use the electric field to induce a spin current. So uh, I think this one is quite useful in the spintronics. And then I'll discuss the re material realization of C plus spin by locking. Uh, in, we take this one as an example, and all, we also predict other materials. Later, I'll uh, briefly mention other work. So after I published my paper, I realized, OK, there are some uh, literature already mentioned some of the ideas. But uh, uh, unfortunately, I haven't realized it when I submitted my work. So yeah, the big challenge is so it's, it's more like a little story. So, so due to the more law, we know, okay, the, the feature size of the, 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 the chips is very, very small now. It's, all, it's almost several nanometer. And then the quantum effect is very, very important and it cannot be ignored. Another uh, thing is, okay, sometimes the chips is considered too many uh, energy. And the most importantly, the energy density is really high and therefore it's very, very hot. So we try to solve this kind of challenge. So if we summarize all the techniques, I think in general, there are the two parts. One thing we say, okay, it's more electronics. So that means we use the charge degree of freedom to, to, uh, to, 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 uh, to save and uh, processing the information. This is the very first thing. And then we, we use the spintronics. So instead of charge, we know, okay, electrons can also have the spin degree of freedom. Therefore, we can also use the spin to save and process the information. I think this is a two typical uh, application. So then we try to uh, find something, uh, find some new way. So actually, so for electrons in a crystal, it has another degree of freedom, it's called value. So basically, okay, this is uh, it's just the crystal momentum, actually. It's, 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 it's uh, in, indoored by the, uh, the pure, uh, 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 periodicity. So therefore, okay, here we try to uh, study, uh, try to understand what's the value degree freedom can play a role. So actually this is uh, a pair of values can also form an emergent degree freedom that can also use in call information, just like a spin. So actually people proposed the value degree freedom as early as in 1917s, uh, as I remember. However, until very recently, so we realized it's very important so, so, uh, so due to the discovery of 2D material of graphene uh, and other 2D materials. So graphene is a very simple 2D material, very simple. You just have a two unit cell, uh, uh, sorry, two atom in a per unit cell. And the band structure is also very simple. So the very interesting part, is, okay, is the linear dispersion or the point along the K, K prime point. 
So due to time reversal symmetry, we know uh, the time reversal symmetry and the inversion symmetry, we know all the bands are spin generated. So therefore, so we have two values, but it seems no spin. However, people found, okay, so with different value have different subalities pseudo spin. So that means the contribution from A subalities and B subalities are different for K and K prime. And therefore, we can also define another uh, degree freedom is called pseudo spin. So it's, it's, it's almost uh, equal to the real spin in, in many senses, in many sense. So then the, the discovery of the 2D material, considered metal that coordinate, this part is really, so making people realize, okay, the value is really interesting. The reason is very simple. So for this part, so the, the value is always getting. So therefore it's not a semiconductor, so we cannot use it in many technologies. However, in transition metals are coordinate, so the band structure is like this one. It's still a, a more like a honeycomb lattice. So it's a triangle lattice, but it has three atomic layers. So it's the ABA stack. In, uh, sorry, it's more like the uh, half of the mirror uh, MZ uh, uh, stacking. And this is the band structure. As you'll see, the band structure also has the band minimum around the K point. However, this one is gapped because the inversion symmetry is breaking. So without considering the spin auto coupling, so this is uh, the Arcon. We can describe the low energy property by this massive the Arcon. And this is uh, the, the, the very simple model. So however, just by this very simple model, we have a different part. And then we, we realize the very culture for different value are opposite. So therefore, and another thing is we have the value dependent selection rule. If we use the optical uh, to excite an electron from the uh, balance band to the conduction band, then the different uh, value have a different selection rule. So why is it proportional to the uh, left uh, circularly, uh, circular, uh, circular, uh, circularly polarized uh, light, and another way is the, the, the right circularly polarized light. So another thing I just mentioned, okay, so due to the opposite very character by this K and K prime, so this one can also have the value for effect. That means that electron come from the K and the K prime, they will have the opposite uh, uh, perpendicular velocity. So therefore it has a value for effect. So, so far we still have, uh, don't have the real spin, it's just a pseudo spin K and K prime. Uh, it's just a value degree freedom. But actually, so in TMB materials, we can have the real spin. So it's very simple because of the, because this uh, TMB material have the very strong spin also coupling. This one can you induce a lattice spin splitting for the two values. So because the inversion symmetry is breaking. So actually, so the time reversal symmetry is still uh, uh, preserved. So therefore, this one can guarantee the spin splitting at the K and the K prime must be opposite. So uh, due to the cream uh, theorem. So and the spin and the value are locked to each other. This is very important. So this is the SLC form. By the symmetry you can see it's almost tau z times uh, uh, sz. This tau z means different value. This sz is the spin degree of freedom. So it's like this one. So basically it's the k and k prime have the opposite uh, spin. So this kind of spin we say is spin value locking. And yeah, in the, in the 2D plot it's like this one. So we have k and the minus k, you see k and minus k, the spin splitting is opposite. Therefore the spin polarization is also, also opposite. So this cost here is very important. Uh, it's because uh, you see in this cost systems we have the spin of the charge of value, and all these kind of degree freedom are coupled to each other. So therefore, so the selective excitations of carrier with various combination of value and spin index become possible with the optical field. So therefore, you can so therefore besides the value hall, it can become the spin hall and the charge hall. So uh, as I just mentioned, the different value for like this one, the different value will uh, have the different uh, perpendicular velocity. That means, so and the different value have different uh, spin. So therefore it could be value hall. And somehow it can also become uh, the, the, the charge hall if, if we induce a valent polarization. And uh, yeah, this is a slide from Professor Yao Wang. You can see there are many, many experimental, uh, experimental progress uh, after the theory work. So I, I'll just I'll, I'll uh, quickly uh, I'll just uh, skip this part. Okay. So yeah, I just uh, mentioned some typical experiments. For example, like this one. This one, people just excited uh, one uh, certain uh, uh, extra uh, uh, photo, uh, photons. Therefore, 
So we always use the left circular report as the optical to excess the electrons. And then we test the, uh, the, 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 the photo, uh, photo luminance spectrum. And you'll see the left one and the right one are opposite. That's right, are very different for the model layer. So then you can, you can demonstrate that. So actually, so we really have the, uh, the, the, the selective excitation for different value. And however, for the, for the bilayer, we, we use the same energy, the bilayer, so it's almost the same. So that means, so why the bilayer is the same? Because the bilayer has the inversion symmetry, so therefore all the values are degenerated. So the model layer uh, has the selection of the bilayer do not. We also have other kind of axons, uh, ax, uh, axons that result is similar. So by this optical experiments, people can really uh, confirm the existence of the spin uh, 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 valley locking and the uh, selective uh, uh, rules. And then this one is more interesting to me. So basically, so without the user screen, you can see we have the value core and the screen core. This, this means, okay, we just, uh, you can use the, the, the optical to, to excite, uh, use the current to, to induce the mechanization for a different edge because the spin up and spin down travel along different direction, opposite direction. So therefore that's spin up around the upper edge and spin down around the, the, the left edge. We will change the current direction. So due to the, 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 the flip of the direction, so the spin polarization also flips. So this is a spin hole. However, for this kind of material though, if you use a spin, so then you will see, okay, the whole sample are uh, have the net mechanization. So for example, this uh, with a spin sample, so this uh, for this current is a spin up, for this current is a spin down. So this is, uh, that means, okay, we can generate the net spin, uh, net magnetization by the spin. However, this is a dynamic property because this, uh, this, this, uh, this magnetization actually is proportional to the uh, local uh, polarization field and the, the charge current. So we can also, so another feature of the spin value locking is the, the very long time depolarization time because the way different value have different spin. That means if you want to flip a spin, you have to insert in the value index or, and if you want to uh, change the value index, you have to flip the spin. So therefore the spin, I expect to have a one longer uh, depolarization time. Okay, so this is, 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 I think this is very important in spin tonics. So, okay, now we do a very simple summary to see what's the physics behind all this phenomena. Actually, that's physics, in my opinion, is very simple. Just the two integrate, uh, ingredients. So the first one is the spin uh, of the coupling. So that means, okay, this one can induce the spin splitting for the different key points. And another one is a temperature symmetry. That means once you have the spin splitting, so the temperature symmetry will ensure the K and the K prime have the opposite spin. So it becomes a decrement jersey. And then, therefore, I, uh, we name this kind of spin by locking uh, 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 as a cheaper spin by locking. That means, okay, the different value, uh, uh, the spin of a different value somehow is paired, it's a pair of spin by locking by the temporal symmetry. So it's a cheaper spin by locking. However, there are some uh, disadvantages for this kind of systems. The, the very simple thing is, okay, so you want to access the value degree freedom or the spin degree freedom, you have to break the, the, the temperature symmetry to manipulate the spin and the value, right? So because it's, it's more like the good quantum number for this kind of thing. So for example, you have to use magnetic field or you use the charge current to do that. So another very important thing is, so this kind of material, we can use them to process the information. However, we cannot save the information. So that means you cannot realize the memory just based on this TMD material. So you cannot have up and down or just the one or zero. So uh, as the, the for electric or for magnetic. So this is a big challenge. Then there are people that want we out. Okay, very famous uh, paper from Andre uh, Andre again, uh, AK again. So so basically they, they propose this kind of idea. Okay, for 2D material, you can stack different materials with different uh, properties and then have the multifunction materials. Okay, actually people really, realize this in experience. So basically you can see they can stack the ferro electricity, uh, magnetic material and this TMD together. And therefore it could realize the, the uh, information storage by this uh, ferro uh, magnetic layer. 
and also processing or, or processing or, or deal with this uh, information by this template uh, material. So do this kind of the, the experiments is very impressive. So however, we think about okay, well, whether we can realize that this can see in a single material. So so that actually, so this is another way out. This this is basically our work or our starting point. So our idea is very simple. So we want to first we want to realize the intrinsic spin wave locking uh, in intrinsic magnetic materials. Okay, that means okay, itself can use the same information. Another thing is okay. So since the it's a ma ma magnetic material, that means the in general the thermal resonance symmetry is broken. So in to enforce the spin pad value locking. Sorry, spin value locking. That means we need another kind of symmetry to replace uh, the thermal resonance symmetry to ensure the different value have a different spin. So, and then we know for analysis is the spin splitting is easy to induce. So that means, okay, because the exchange coupling between uh, itinerary electron and the local, magnet, uh, um, local magnetic moment. So therefore it can easily to induce the spin splitting and this one could be very large actually. And then the different value could be paired by critical symmetry that can ensure this uh, different uh, opposite the spin, uh, paired, uh, spin, value, uh, spin splitting. So basically the idea is like this. It's actually it's very simple. Suppose we have the crystal field, uh, sorry, crystal symmetry. This crystal symmetry can map the K and the K to K prime. And uh, for example, and also can map the spin to spin, spin up to the spin down, like the mirror symmetry. And then this kind of idea is we call it the C plus spin by locking, okay? So th then C means the crystal symmetry. So uh, maybe you think, okay, it's quite uh, trivial. So at the beginning, I also, Think it's quite clear, it's just another name, doesn't mean anything. However, then I think I think it's more I found very, very interesting. Okay, let me explain more. So, first, let me prove it. This kind of thing can really re, uh, realize in theory. So, actually, the theory is very, very simple. So, I just realized it can be realized in the anti uh, ferromagnetic systems. The reason is very simple. Let me prove it uh, for you. So without the loss of generosity, we, we just assume there are two subalities in the in the material, and they have the local magnetic moment is called the R A and M R B, and since it's anti ferromagnetic material, that means they must be uh, equivalent, uh, equal, but have opposite sign under a certain symmetry. So for example, the crystal symmetry C. So that means our crystal or other kind of crystal conventors or or any kind of symmetry. Can have to have uh, map the real space. And this one can map A to B. And to a simple calculation, you can see this MRB actually could be the integral of the momentum of space and of the, the eigenvalue of the spin. And to a very simple uh, calculation, you can prove that. So to satisfy this MRA, you have to minus MRB. Of course, this is a vector. And then you have this, you, you have to have these two equations. So what does it mean? So that means, so this K and uh, another value, uh, K and another momentum K, uh, related by this crystal symmetry, that spin polarization must be opposite. Okay, it's very, just very simple uh, calculation. So therefore, okay, as long as there is a spin splitting, so in the anti magnetic materials, there must be C pad spin by locking. So, so however, so we have to break a certain symmetry. So one of the symmetry is a PT symmetry. Uh, P means uh, inversion symmetry. T is time resolve. That means uh, inversion time time resolve symmetry. This kind of symmetry must be broken. Otherwise, the whole band is uh, two fold joint. So therefore, uh, you do not have this splitting. Then okay. So what's the property? So yeah, we, we go through a lot of things to, to demonstrate the existence of this kind of thing. So what's the property? So the most uh, important advantage for this kind of system is uh, you can easily to manipulate both the spin and the value very easily by many, many different methods uh, because it's protected by the uh, crystal symmetry. So it's very easy to break a crystal symmetry in, in reality. For example, very simple spin field, you can break a crystal symmetry. You can also use the electric field or optical field, or magnetic field, or even thermal field. So all the field can break this crystal symmetry. And then you can manipulate this spin and value. Okay, so this is the idea. So why I say this C plus spin value locking is very interesting because it's kind of thing. Of course, here I'll use two examples. One is the string, one is the electric field. 
for the string, so basically the conclusion is you can use the string to induce the net maximization. Later, I'll explain why. And then you can also use the electric field to generate the spin current. So even in this anti-ferromagnetic uh, materials without SOC, without all these fancy things. Yeah, first we introduce the, the, the string uh, effect. So here we just use the deformation theory. Again, it's a, the, the very basic, a simple uh, theory. Okay, so it's just qualitatively correct. So let me uh, analyze it for you. So basically we can write the KTOP Hamiltonia, it's a very simple one, just the probability band and a very simple one. And then we can add the string perturbation in the framework of deformation theory. So yeah, just the basic, we add new terms. So yeah. So the, the, the end shift for the key value will be something like this, with spin and without spin. So basically, you can always write it in this way, okay? Now just assume that DSX is a parameter, all this kind of parameter. This if so, it's a string tensor. And the, more, the most important thing is we want to suppose, so for one single value, the shift is like this way. And due to the crystal symmetry, you can easily get the shift for another value. Okay, just it's very simple, just the symmetry operation, the metric uh, production. You can get the end shift for another value. Okay, so it's, it's, it seems quite complicated, but uh, it's fine. You can see they are different. Okay, then we see the difference between this end shift for a different value. So basically, this is a result. This is the data. Okay, still very complicated. Okay, sorry, I forgot to mention here, I, I just use the mirror symmetry as an example. And this phi means the, the mirror plane. Uh, the, 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 the angle between mirror plane and x, x, x axis, okay? Just to, to uh, indicate the mirror plane, where the mirror plane. Okay, so this is the result. This seems very complicated, but we can do some very simple uh, simplification. Suppose now we just focus on the unit axis string. So why we do this? Because it's simple. For this unit axis string, there is only one parameter. So yeah, two parameters. One is the strings, this is R theta, uh, so one strings and the, 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 the magnitude. Here we focus on the direction. The direction actually you can use, you can it's more like a rotation from this unit axle to other kind of things. You can this string tensor into this part, then you get the result. So the final result actually is very simple. You can see this data E, so it's, it's proportional to the uh, uh, strings uh, mag uh, magnetic field. And somehow it's also related to the string direction. So this is theta is the direction of unit axial string. This phi is a mirror plane. So the conclusion is very simple. Just as expected, as long as the string breaks the mirror symmetry, so there will be value polarization. So the value polarization in our field is defined as the energy difference between different values. Okay. So you can you can already prove it. So far, it still seems boring because it's easy to to say, okay, you, of course you, you can induce the uh, imbalance between different values. So the really interesting part is about finite doping. So without the string, the two values, K and K prime will have the exactly same energy. So therefore the total maximization is zero. However, after the string, there will be finite energy shift between K, uh, among K and K, uh, between K and K prime value. So if there are finite doping, so that means, okay, the occupation of spin up and spin down electron will be different. So therefore, in this sense, so the value polarization will automatically become the magnetization. Okay, so this is the uh, ideas of the, I say it might be giant piezo magnetism. The reason is very simple because it's proportional to the carrier density. So, and the proportional to the string, of course, is saturated for the, when it's saturated, that means all the, uh, I think the electrons are polarized. The totally polarized, then it's saturated for the spin. So, so we can try this one to the conventional P, uh, PZM. So the usually the PZM actually is from the non-collinear AFM system because after under the spin, so this is local magnetic moment will rotate. So therefore, the, 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 the summation of them is no longer zero. But here is the magnetism um, uh, mechanism is very, very different. So this part is actually is from itinerary electron. So the local magnetic moment does not change too much. However, the itinerary electron changes. So therefore, it can induce the, 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 uh, the magnetization. So this is quite different. So therefore, I'd say in some materials, this one might be much bigger than this one. So this is the effect of the string. 
So we can also consider the responsible electric field. So here again, so for me, I can I'm just really to this new uh really new to this spin field. So I just use a very simple method. Okay. So quantitatively maybe it's wrong, but qualitatively I think it's correct. So here we just use the Boltzmann equation, very simple one. And then we assume the band structure is very simple, just a probability band. So here I use the two dimension as an example. So for one value, it's like this one. It has an isotropy M1 and M2, different effective mass. Then again, follow the critical symmetry, we can get uh, the, the, the band structure for another value. It's like this one. It still seems complicated, uh, but it's OK. The final result is very simple. And then we say, OK, so do a calculation. We can calculate the contribution to the conductivity for each value. That is just to follow this method. It's very, very simple, actually. So this tau is the reaction time. And again, this one, you can get it from the symmetry. Assume this one, you can get this one. OK, just a very straightforward calculation. So the interesting part is like this. OK, the total conductivity is very easy. It's more like the summation of the conductivity between uh, for different value. So this one is boring. It's, it's just a very simple for my equation result. The really interesting part is this one. So because the value, the, the, the conductivity tensor from different value are different, and the different value have different spin. So therefore, we can call the spin conductivity. It's more like the spin up for the, this value minus the spin down. OK, another value. And we can do this one uh, because here we do not have any spin of coupling. So that means the spin itself is still a quantum number. It's very different from the spin hole. So therefore, so in the very simple theory, so this is being a good quantum number. So the spin conductivity is actually is well defined. So therefore, we can directly write it in this way. So, so as you see, it's, this one is actually very simple. So it depends on the direction of the electric field. Also, it depends on the anisotropy. So if there are no anisotropy, that means for each value, if the thing surface is a circle, so that means this one is zero. So there will be no spin current. So if there is a finite anisotropy, so that will be spin current. And more importantly, you can, if you do the calculation, the, 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 the spin conductivity that determined is, is constant. So that means no matter where the spin direction, or sorry, the electric field direction, the, the magnitude of spin current is always the same in, in this kind of material, in this kind of system. Yeah, but this is because of the mirror symmetry. So, and the effective spin hole angle, I think this is not a good one. So yeah, let me show you the, the, the interesting part like this, OK? So if you just see this, for example, if the electric field is along the mirror plane, so that means the theta equal to 5. So this one will be 0. So only off diagonal term exists. this. So that means if you apply a magnetic uh, electric field here, you will get the, uh, the, the perpendicular spin current. It's just like the spin hole. It's not spin hole. It's, it's, it, is a phenomenon is very, very similar. So based on this one, we can also define the spin hole angle. So as you see, this spin hole angle is really proportional to the uh, the, 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 the anisotropy, OK? So all other things is the mirror plane, OK? So yeah, this is basically the general theory, OK? It's, uh, again, it's very, very simple. So OK, so here I do a very simple comparison between other mechanisms. Maybe it's wrong. If, if I say something wrong, please tell me. OK, I'm really too new to the field. So in my opinion, so in the, there are two, way to, uh, uh, two main ways to generate the spin current uh, or spin polarized current. One simple way is in the ferromagnetic material. So that means uh, it's very, because the spin, uh, the dense state is spin polarized. So therefore, the charged current will automatically become the spin current for this one. And the spin polarization is always along the magnetization direction. So another conventional way is in a material with spin optical coupling. So due to the spin optical coupling, it will have spin hole effect. So in this case, we can get a pure spin uh, current. This one is not a pure spin current, it's a spin polarized current. However, in this one, so the spin is no longer going to count the number. And the spin reaction time could be very, very short or very, very narrow spin, uh, spin diffusion length. So because it's kind of the so, uh, so not, uh, it's kind of a condition, uh, can't, can't be the requirement. So, spin of the company generates a spin hole. 
However, spin auto coupling also destroys the spin uh, coherence. So this one is actually is 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 very interesting, but somehow is a lot of debate. So in all systems, it's more like a combination of both. So it's first first of all, spin optical coupling is no longer necessary. Second one is okay, it could generate both the spin forest current and the pure spin current, depends on the electric field direction. For like uh, for yeah, later I will show more examples that you can understand that it's better. And almost another thing is the equivalent spin hole angle actually is proportional to the uncertainty of spin velocity or spin surface. So here I'll use this one as an example, this material. So yeah, here we talk, discuss how can we realize the real material. So actually, as you will see, the requirement is quite simple. As long as the PT symmetry is breaking, as long as the anti uh, anti ferromagnetic uh, magnetic material is okay. So most of the time it works. So for example, okay, this is a 2D material example. It's a new compound, a compound just recently for, uh, fabricated. So, so far it's not a crystal. It's, it's, it's very difficult to grow actually. So the, the thermal, uh, it's, a, it's a thermal uh, dynamic stable. And also we do various tests. We say, okay, the ground state is more like the, this new type of ground state AFM. This is a vanadium. Uh, there are the two vanadium per cell. So it's up and down, this kind of thing. And we do all the uh, calculations uh, use the DFT to make sure, okay, this is a ground state. And yeah, we also do the analytic, uh, the critical field uh, analysis to, to further confirm, okay, the, 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 the local magnetic moment is consistent as the DFT calculation. So everything is consistent here is just to, to show, okay, it's really expected. Okay, so this is a band structure. So for this band structure, so if we do not include the, the correlation, so it's quite messy, it's just metal. So if we in, uh, increase the correlation, uh, the half of the yield, you can see, okay, it's, uh, it's gradually become a semiconductor. Yeah, it determines it's a semiconductor. So therefore we choose the yield as this one in the future calculation. As you'll see for this kind of square lattice, you can see there are two values. One is at the X point, one is at the Y point. And then, uh, most importantly, the different value have for opposite spin polarization. So this one is spin up, this one is spin down, just as we predict or we, we, we propose in the general theory. And then we can also do the calculation for the cross particle, uh, cross particle interference. The reason we do the calculation like this is very simple because this one actually can serve as the evidence for the existence of AFM order in this kind of material. So without the spin value locking, so the, the, the different value will have the very strong scattering between all of them. However, due to the spin value locking, so that means we only have the uh, scattering among the same value. So the, 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 the inter value scattering is strongly suppressed. So therefore, we can easily uh, 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 confirm this kind of thing using the STM, just remember the QPI. So it should be okay. So now we talk about the, the value proposition. So through the more detailed uh, systematic uh, uh, DFT calculation, you can see, so as expected, so if we apply a string along A direction or B direction, uh, X and Y, then the, 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 the value will uh, shift uh, compared to another one. So this is uh, from the negative screen, compressive screen to the tensile screen. And uh, this is the value position. Of course, we can also directly calculate the doping effect. So we do the calculation with some doping. You can see, okay, so it's really have the land magnetization. This is the, 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 the number of the magnetization called large T's. And also we can plot it in another line plot. It's, it's, it's more clear. You can see, okay, uh, under the compressive screen and the tensile screen, the magnetization have opposite. And uh, just uh, as, as the calculator in the general theory, it's, it's well saturated for, for very large screen. Because this is basically all the electron are uh, polarized. Here you see you plot as the uh, the doping uh, the, the the doping density. You can see carrier density. You can okay, it's also uh, uh, saturated with the screen. So this part means all the carrier is polarized by by this kind of thing. So yeah, we also do the calculation for the the the, the screen current generation. So basically, this is still just following the, the Cuba formula, just very simple. So we assume the resistance time or this kind of thing on the carrier density, you can do the calculation. And here I want to mention something like this. 
Hey, guys, since this one is very simple, I can use this one to, to learn more about the spin current generation. So basically, we have two values, and as x and y. So x have spin up and y have spin down. So, so my initial idea actually is just the spin polarized current because at the beginning, I guess if we apply an electric field along x direction, so because the contribution of a spin current from this value and this value are different because they have different velocity. So therefore, this one spin current, the current will be automatically spin polarized. The more interesting part is like this, okay? If I apply a magnetic uh, electric field along this uh, diagonal direction, so that means, so along this direction, the two value, so how to say, you know, we plot in this way. So along the electric field direction, the contribution from different value are same. Because you see, the, it's, 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 it's symmetric, right? So, so along the projection of the, the off diagonal term, off diagonal direction, they are same. However, along the perpendicular current direction, so the component, the projection, uh, the magnitude is the same. However, the sign is opposite. So that means, okay, the total charge current will be well, along this direction because the summation of two component, uh, two parts. However, there will be a spin current along the perpendicular direction because you see they have the opposite spin polarization. So this is why I say, okay, this can really generate the spin current. Okay, so yeah, basically we, we, we mainly focus on the uh, V2, SE2O, this material is a new proposed material, it's a 2D material because the best price is simple. We also do a calculation for other materials. So like this one. So yeah, when we uh, submit the work, we just uh, uh, briefly search the uh, database. We found all these materials actually can also call this uh, C plus C very lucky. So some of them are metal, some of them are, uh, are insulating. So if they are insulating, uh, they may have the PZM. But if they are metal, they, they, they can have this non-collinear spin current or pure spin current that's been current. Uh, 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 you just feel the direction dependent uh, spin current. So yeah, as I said at the beginning, so after we submit our work, our publisher our work, and then we discuss with some experts. So I really know some experts after I entered this field and we realized, okay, there are actually so many, many work mentioned this kind of same ideas. It's not the exact same, the different view point, but uh, they mentioned like this. For example, at back in 2019, this paper discussed, okay, this one could be an anti anti uh, ferromagnetic materials and uh, could realize the spin current. And also, this paper they propose even in organic anti uh, anti mass, they can also generate the spin current. So they, they do not discuss the reason like uh, like uh, what I did in this way. So, but they also mentioned this kind of the phenomena. And this one is is uh, is from this one. It's also okay. They realize okay for the AF materials. There could be large uh, momentum dependent spin splitting. They, they realize, okay, because the, uh, the, the exchange coupling between itinerary electron and the local mag magnetic moment, they have, have a very large spin splitting. And uh, this one is very interesting to say. And also, this one is very, very important. So, yeah, they, 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 they explicitly say, okay, so we can get the uh, spin splitter. They call this one the spin splitter effect based on this, uh, this, this kind of thing. They also explicitly mention, okay, so the anisotropy will, deter, uh, will determine the, 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 the spin current uh, magnitude or something like this. And also I found this one is uh, called the spin uh, uh, neutral current for spin tonics. Basically all this, uh, they, they are uh, focused on these materials. And the more uh, encouraging is uh, recently experimental prog uh, progress, just the last year, that several months ago, I found some paper on archive so actually we found three papers, all of them on this lithium oxide, uh, dioxide. They found this one just, uh, so, uh, just as expected can realize this spin current. And they also measured the, the spin, to spin, spin, spin torque talk uh, by this way. By, by the proposal, uh, the, by the proposal, the, uh, the, the method in, in this kind of uh, theoretical work. So I think this is really uh, interesting and uh, promising. So therefore I feel this field is uh, very, very interesting. Okay, so here is my final slide. I have a very simple summary. So basically, yeah, from the value physics view, so we propose the C-pass being very locking. 
Uh, after this uh, casting, I, I explore the response to spring field and electric field. And we found, okay, for this kind of bus structure, it can really have very many, many more properties like the PDM and the spin current generation. So yeah, here I want to thank the, my uh, funding uh, support and my collaborators. So basically this work is collaborated with Professor Jing Feng Jia from Shanghai Jiangzhou University and Professor Yao Wang from Hong Kong University. These two are my students. So basically the, the main work is done by them. So, okay, thank you for your attention. So yeah, any question, please feel, to, feel free to let me know. Okay, thank you, thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you very much for this interesting talk. I can use the uh, reactions button to thank the speaker. Uh, if you have any question, please uh, use the raise hand function in Zoom. And I think uh, Professor Fei Xue, you have a question, first question. Yeah, sure, please. Uh, thank you so much for the nice talk. Uh, I have two simple questions. So the first one is uh, the spin polarized current due to the C paired uh, effect is is that always out of plan or it can also I mean a polarization direction can also uh, be dependent on electric electric field direction. The okay. second one is the second one is you said it was um, the the magnitude is dependent of the uh, social being in x y direction. So why is that? I mean, um, is there any symmetry reason or deeper reason? Um, that had to be the case. Okay, very good question. The, the first one, so as I mentioned, so, so this is being carried down, it's more like that's being carried in the ferromagnetized material. So therefore, mm -hmm. the spin polarization is always along the magnetization direction. I mean, the new order local magnetic movement direction. So because without the spin auto coupling, so therefore spin is a full quantum number. So the spin current is from the imbalance between spin up and spin down. I mean, the contribution are different for different values. So therefore, so the direction is always uh, the, along the uh, magnetization direction and, or the new order direction is uh, for the first one. But of course, in realistic, in, 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 in real materials, it's always some very small uh, spin auto coupling. So maybe it can, could change. So for the second question, why is the proportional uncertainty? So it's still from the reason. Because you see, so the spin current, you get this spin current because the contribution of conductivities uh, between uh, of the two values are different. So why they are different? Because the anisotropy. So if for each value, they are just a circle without any anisotropy, it's an it's anisotropic a, a uh, surface. That means no matter which direction, so the contribution mm -hmm. from both values are always the same. So therefore, the difference between them is zero. So therefore, there are no spin points current. I see. So, so that means we have to break some symmetry, right? Um, oh, no. the so actually, so, so in many materials, so it's very difficult to get the perfect and sort of material. Especially you have a different value. This value is not around the gamma point. I see, I see. So it's but you have immersion, but you still have immersion symmetry in the system. Yeah, you can have all this kind of uh, symmetry. It doesn't matter. Because, uh, okay. you, yeah. So, so yeah, this is the interesting part. So this is also very interesting when I first realized it. Okay, if we just measure the charge conductivity, it's always isotropic, isotropic. Because the summation of them is always a constant in this kind of if you have a mirror symmetry. However, there are difference. This one matters this one. It's highly dependent, it's highly dependent. But the magnitude, the magnitude is, is always the same. In this case, it's protected by mirror symmetry, then the magnitude is the same. Only the direction of spin current depends on the large field direction. Okay, thank you so much. Yeah. Wait, do we have any other question? I want to ask a, a, a quick one. So uh, in the system you study these are 2D materials that you apply the uh, electric field in plane and whether it's spin polarized or spin hall, the spin current still flows in the film plane, right? Yes, yeah. So uh, 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 if, if I'm thinking about the applications uh, spin orbit torques, you really want, we want them spin current to flow out of plane so it can enter a second ferromagnetic layer to generate a torque. How would uh, we utilize the spin current that flows in the 2D plane uh, okay. for memory applications? Yes, very, very good question. Actually, so this paper discussed a lot so, uh, of this kind of thing. 
from Yakub. So this paper this has a lot of this concern. So actually, here uh, it's, it's only flow in the in plane because it's a two dimension in the in the in the, in the theory con consideration. So there are no three dimension. So actually, in the in this kind of calculation, so as I said, in other materials, it's a three dimension. So actually, the tensor itself is a three D. So actually, the, the spin current is is a tensor. It's no longer a, a, a vector. So therefore, it's a flow in the whole plane. It's not only one direction. So all the direction of the component. I see. I see. I see. Great. Yeah. Thank you very much. Okay. Do I have other question from the audience? If not at this moment, we'll still have another discussion session afterwards. So at this moment, oh, Faye has another question. Uh, yes, we can do later. It doesn't matter. Yeah, yeah, we you can you can final finalize the meeting. Oh, okay, sure. <laughs> yeah, okay. So I want to thank the speaker again. At this moment, we're gonna turn off the uh, streaming and the recording.